Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new episode. It's finally happening, F1 is back. Today I'm previewing the Bahrain Grand Prix, the opening round of the 2021 championship. My name's Aaron and it's time for the five red lights. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights. Okay then everybody, let's get into this. But before I kick off the episode and preview the Bahrain Grand Prix, I'd just like to say thank you for everyone who has, so thank you to everybody who has viewed, subscribed, liked, commented on any of the videos uh, that I've been putting up uh, in pre-season. Uh, thank you for everyone's uh, chat on Twitter. Um, I've been involved in some conversations with some brilliant other YouTube creators. It's been brilliant. It's been so fun. We've had lots of good chat. And, you know, if you are new to the channel, um, give it a like if you enjoy what you find here. Subscribe if you want to see more. And, obviously, I just hope that you enjoy the content. And thank you for watching. Thank you for interacting. Uh, the unboxing of my first Drive Crate box got to 50 views recently, which for me is huge. Uh, for someone else that might not be so much but for me that is massive so thank you to everyone who has watched that um so let's kick off this uh barring grand prix preview <laughs> what are we looking forward to this season i'm looking forward to red bull challenging mercedes now as you can see there are some mercedes hats behind me i am a uh, a Lewis Hamilton fan. So for me Red Bull challenging Mercedes and Hamilton means that we get the best possible version of Mercedes and Hamilton. Hamilton is a megastar. He is the best on the current grid without doubt. And seven world championships proves that. But we need to see him really really pushed. Bottas just can't cut it really at the moment. Bottas might come out of his shell. If, if push comes to shove and he's talked about being more selfish this could be the year for him but based on previous evidence it's not there we could see with Rosberg that there was something there and he just had to push the right buttons against Hamilton Bottas hasn't hasn't done that so Verstappen's the man to challenge Hamilton Red Bull have finally it seems got a car that can challenge him so I'm really looking forward to that I'm looking forward to see to seeing how McLaren get on. I think they're going to win a race this season. It's going to be really interesting seeing the progression of the dynamic between Ricardo and Norris. But what about Ferrari? Can they get back to the front of the midfield and possibly even um, challenging Red Bull and Mercedes again? And what of Aston Martin? You know, with their now green Mercedes. They've got Sebastian Vettel. Lance Stroll is always improving. Loads of different storylines that are going to be going through this season and there's going to be so much happening off the track as well because as we all know Formula 1 isn't just uh, a competition on the circuit it's as much a competition uh, in those conference rooms or the Zoom meetings at the moment as <laughs> they're probably not all allowed in the same room so you know let's hope no one is smashing doors like Gunther Steiner and Kevin Magnussen uh, in 2019 lots of exciting things to look forward to Probably the, the biggest thing is the possible, t hopeful championship battle between Verstappen and Hamilton because we need to see that. We need to see that that clash of the ages, the, the established king versus the upstart um, of Verstappen. We saw Schumacher versus Alonso and we got a bit of a showdown there which could really have gone on a little bit longer and that could have been a battle for the ages, a Senna Prost sort of rivalry. But of course, Schumacher retired at the end of 2006. So we haven't really seen one of these sort of the changing of the guards uh, for a little while. So hopefully, we, we can get that uh, this season. So obviously, the first race was supposed to be Melbourne, which was last weekend or the weekend before the weekend they did testing, I think. Uh, so that got bumped into November because of COVID, still hanging around like a bad smell. So we are opening up in Bahrain. We opened up the 2010 season in Bahrain with the endurance circuit, which went down uh, very badly indeed amongst everybody. 
So what happened last time we were in Bahrain? Let's just have a little reminder. Well, of course, we had Roman Grosjean's spectacular, fiery accident, uh, something which we are all very glad that he walked out alive from and is obviously going IndyCar racing this season. They've published the findings from that accident, which made quite scary reading. So hopefully they'd have learned the lessons and they can implement something for that. They implemented something for the Sake Grand Prix uh, last season because of course we had two races in Bahrain didn't we we had double the fun um, so let, let's finish recapping the the uh, Bahrain Grand Prix itself so we had Grosjean's accident uh, Lance Stroll was turned over by Daniel Kafiat after the restart we were delayed by about an hour uh, everything was going swimmingly Hamilton and Bottas at the front and Sergio Perez has got himself into a wonderful third position uh, before his Mercedes engine let him down and presented uh, uh, Albon, wasn't it? With, uh, in fact, it wasn't. It wasn't Bottas in second, was it? He was having a nightmare. Uh, it was Verstappen in second. That's why I got confused. Uh, so it was Hamilton, Verstappen, and then Perez, and Albon benefited first from Perez's uh, blown engine and took his second podium of the season. Then. A day later, after Hamilton won that Grand Prix, he tested positive for COVID, which meant he missed the Sake Grand Prix on the outer circuit. And we had the George Russell in Mercedes story, which uh, wasn't included on Drive to Survive. Russell, obviously, in the Mercedes was the big talking point. He qualified second to Bottas, got ahead of him at the first corner. Then there was the accident with Perez, Leclerc, and Verstappen. Perez dropped to last. And was probably going to end up on the podium or there or thereabouts before Mercedes dropped a clangor in the pit lane, putting the wrong tyres on the wrong cars. And then uh, Russell was very unfortunate on his comeback uh, drive through the field to pick up a puncture when he probably would have gone on to win the race. And that handed victory to Sergio Perez in a little bit of poetic justice. Just seven days after he had seen a podium slip through his fingers, fate hands him victory instead so that was what happened last time in Bahrain what do we think is going to happen this time so who's looking strongest heading into Bahrain well Red Bull are the favorites having enjoyed an almost perfect pre-season test uh, also in Bahrain um, and they'll be hoping that they can turn that into an opening race victory. Something they haven't achieved since 2011 with Sebastian Vettel in Melbourne. They've always tended to be there or thereabouts, especially uh, in the V8 and the V8 era. They stuck it on pole in Bahrain in 2010 and they took pole position in 2013 in Australia. Um, but they didn't actually manage to turn those into victories through strategy or reliability. The only one they managed to do was Vettel's win in 2011, where he kind of ran off into the distance and did what he did in a Red Bull, which was race around on his own at the front. So that's their only uh, opening weekend triumph. They've never managed to score a 1-2 to kick off a season, which most of the major players throughout history have done. Mercedes have done it, Ferrari used to do it all the time, McLaren, Williams. If you were a constructor that had ambitions to win the Constructors and the Drivers' Championship, scoring a 1-2 to start the season was the most emphatic possible way of laying down a marker to your opposition. Red Bull, despite having won four consecutive uh, Drivers' and Constructors' World Championships, didn't ever achieve that at the opening race. Maybe because they had an Australian in their, in their other car, in Mark Webber, and he was notoriously unlucky uh, around Albert Park uh, from 2003 onwards. So maybe if they'd had a different driver? I don't know. But they're the favourites heading into the opening race. Mercedes, the defending world champions, seven times over, had a little bit of a disaster in testing, of course. They struggled in comparison to Red Bull, but they do have a proven record of being able to rectify these sort of issues throughout the early stages of a season. If you think back to 2018 and 2019 when they were battling with Ferrari, they got on top of issues, they got on top of a diva car, or they 
um, in 2019 they had a very basic aerodynamic package and then they upgraded fine-tuned it and off they went so you know it's, it's conceivable that they could have a, a sluggish start by their standards but then they get on top of their issue and then they just go on to do what they have done so many times before and crush the opposition uh, into submission now it's a traction limited circuit in Bahrain and it's one that Ferrari when they were challenging were consistently able to challenge Mercedes at and often beat them so in 2017 2018 Vettel taking victory there and they really should have bagged a 1-2 in 2019 when uh, they looked out the front row but for Vettel's spin and Charles Leclerc's engine issues uh, they walked away uh, without victory at all uh, they walked away with a third place for Charles and Seb would have been somewhere way down the order having had to pit for fresh tyres and a new wing but obviously only three days of testing so we can't really be too sure I think that only really offers a glimpse into a car's true potential and the fact that it's only at one circuit if they'd had perhaps three days at different circuits which what in the current um, situation would have been completely out of the question uh, we might have got a better indication uh, so there is a chance that the mechanical problems that Red Bull did not encounter rear, rear their heads and trip them up a little bit but given that these are the, pretty much the same cars as last year I can't see that uh, happening too much Mercedes had issues with the transmission with the gearbox which is probably all new for 2021 to go with the engine which is all new as well so that's probably where they've had teething problems and I'm sure they'll get on top of that you don't really see gearbox issues all that often anymore uh, back in the mid 2000s uh, was when that started to really die out you know are we gonna see a Mercedes on pole anyway who knows I mean they've done it before they could do it again they've got Lewis Hamilton even if the car isn't absolutely perfect so he could still pull that out he's got 90 or 97 pole positions I can't remember off the top of my head I think it's 97 maybe 95 um, I can't remember which way around his wins and pole positions are now all of a sudden but he is the man when it comes to a single lap could he do it yes will he do it we'll have to find out So to finish off the Bahrain Grand Prix preview episode, I'm going to give you my predictions and I would really want to hear your predictions. Uh, so you can tweet me uh, at five underscore red underscore lights on Twitter. You can just pop them in the comments down below and we can discuss them down there. Or you can, uh, I, I don't, does anyone do post anymore? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is my predictions and I'm calling it Aaron versus the F1 world uh, because hopefully through the season I'm going to be able to uh, get some people to come on and join me and give their predictions. Um, again, if you want to do that, we can work that out. We can try and get lots of people's predictions uh, into the video. So if that's something you wanted to, to, to get involved with, do so. We can get in touch and we can sort that out. But let's get some predictions for the Bahrain Grand Prix on the board. Pole position on Saturday. Always crucial. Maybe not quite so much around Bahrain given the power of the DRS. Um, but I'm going for Max Verstappen. Given all I've just said before about Lewis Hamilton being the man, I think the Mercedes is not going to be able to compete with the Red Bull around the uh, Bahrain circuit. Max is just as good at pulling out a lap as Lewis. So it's going to go Max Verstappen on pole position. The first Red Bull pole since 2013 at the opening round. Moving on to the winner of the race. Max Verstappen is going to win the race. That's what I think. I can see him waltzing away in the distance, getting out of DRS. And you, kind of, you know how he kind of 
loves driving around Mexico because he and the Red Bull are just kind of at one around that circuit. It's going to be kind of like that, I think. He's going to be off up the road and he's going to leave everyone else to squabble over the podium positions. Talking of which, my podium is Verstappen as the winner, Lewis Hamilton in second place, and Sergio Perez is going to get a debut podium for Red Bull. I don't think Bottas will be able to handle the, what he called, snappy rear end quite so well through uh, the race as Hamilton. Okay, Hamilton had those two spins, but we know he will, he will just be able to maximize what he's got on that day. Bottas is decent around uh, Bahrain, but Hamilton had the edge over him in the race there last season. If push comes to shove, will we see the selfish Valtteri on the opening weekend? Is he going to give way to Hamilton in the way that he kind of has in races gone by? We'll have to wait and see. But I think he'll be beaten onto the podium by Sergio Perez. And that's going to be a boost for Sergio's confidence. Uh, should it come across and should it come off and it'll be a wonderful start for Red Bull I don't think they'll get that one too I think Hamilton's going to split them um, on the podium now a bold prediction something that might get uh, a few people's tongues wagging in the comments section something that could be loaded with some spots my bold prediction for the Bahrain Grand Prix is not actually something that's going to happen in the race. It's going to happen in qualifying. And it's going to be what doesn't happen. My bold prediction is that both Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso are eliminated in Q2. The Alpine and the Aston Martin had tricky or underwhelming, probably call it underwhelming pre-season tests for different reasons and I think they're actually both going to be out qualified by their teammates who may or may not reach Q3 maybe Ocon or Stroll will be one that reaches Q3 but I think Vettel and Alonso for different reasons because Vettel is coming into a new car and hasn't had as much track time as he probably would have liked to get settled in it and Stroll has Probably pretty much had that car built round him uh, for last season not in terms of driving style but he's comfortable in it and he, he knows what to get out of it and Alonso is coming back from two years Ocon came back from one year was rusty Ocon's uh, Alonso's got two years out doing rallying or endurance racing it's not the same it's just not a Formula 1 car is an animal like no other. Fernando is Fernando and he is good. But he's pushing 40 now. It's going to take some effort for him to get back, uh, back on top of that straight away. So I don't think he's going to make Q3. I don't think Sebastian's going to make Q3 either. That's my bold prediction. If you disagree, put it in the comments and we can discuss and we can wait and see what happens. So that are my predictions. Max Verstappen for pole position. Max Verstappen to win. Verstappen, Hamilton and Perez, the top three in the race. My bold prediction, Vettel and Alonso out in Q2. All right, well, that is the end of the Bahrain Grand Prix preview. As I said, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know your predictions for the Grand Prix and for qualifying, who's going to be on pole position. Uh, let me know where your favorite driver is going to end up. Uh, my favourite driver is Hamilton, so I think he's going to end up in third place. I think we might actually see an all Red Bull front row. And then Hamilton come through in the race. That's all for today's episode. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and you like what you see. Uh, follow us on Twitter at 5 underscore red underscore lights. Uh, we are 5 red lights on Instagram. And I actually have a blog uh, with a couple of uh, interesting articles you might find you might uh, you could be able to find on there i'll leave a link in the description down below it's five redlights.wixsite.com slash five rl podcast um if you want to take a look at that uh, i've got a, a, a blog about lance stroll and i've got one about giovanazzi and the 2021 uh, game 
uh, Formula One game improvements that I'd like to see. And so I'll be updating that through the season. But thanks for watching, and I will see you next time because we have reached the checkered flag on another episode. My name's Aaron. This has been the Five Road Lights, and that is the checkered flag. Until the next time, guys, I will see you when the Five Red Lights go out.